Well, it is days like this that the live stream is just a blessing because it is blowing out here, isn't it, Tad McLean? Yes, it'll blow a dog off a chain out here today. <laughs> it's a very wild day. Times like this, I realised I need to have brought a jar as a bone. But anyway, we're going to have a wonderful class here at the moment and bring to you class 41. It's our uh, non-hackney class that's being judged at the moment, non not exceeding 14 hands, or 13 hands, I believe. Yeah, that'd be right. Um, yeah, the little fellas. And uh, they've worked out good in the wind. They've sort of... Uh, done the right thing and been very well behaved. I've seen a bag blow across the arena earlier and go under one of the horses that never even batted an eyelid. So, great pony. They're great, some of these ponies. They're doing a great job. We've got some exhibits um, behind us at the moment. They're just on the circle for our judge, Rodney Lane, who's come to us from Victoria. Uh, he's really enjoyed his time judging here. He's a wonderful chap. He is the most thorough judge I reckon I've ever seen. He's even measured the length of the fall on the whips and he looks at the boots and um, in some of the period stuff he's looked in the purses and checked that the money's the right date and uh, oh, he is so thorough, so, so thorough. So this is a wonderful look at uh, the way we travelled in Australia before the uh, advent of, or the invention I should say, of the motorised car. Yeah, well, when I was a small child, I lived in the migrant camp up here on Dawes Road and we had the, uh, the baker, Barry Critchley delivered bread in the baker's cart, we had the ice man who delivered the ice, we had the milkman and we had all sorts of uh, horse-drawn vehicles running around. Well, Tad, speaking about the way things were, I've actually got some beautiful old photographs I'm going to show you now and we're going to uh, have a look at uh, a time before now when this was in fact the mode of transport for people going to get their groceries going off to church uh, and uh, there's some beautiful old shots that we're going to bring up on the screen now oh, yeah. they are, oh that's that's a fabulous shot yeah well i'll tell you what that is actually a 1920 shot with a horse-drawn wagon at a horse show oh that is terrific yeah it looks like oh that's a nice one too uh, this is a prize-winning horse-drawn vehicle in 1912 in south australia yeah, there used to be 400 um, horse-drawn vehicles that used to run around at the square mile of Adelaide in the 30s between the two wars. Actually, Jeff Evans, who's a great uh, show jumping rider, his father used to run horse taxis between the two wars. Truly. Well, this is a horse-drawn vehicle waiting at an event at a horse show in South Australia. And the shot that's just come up on your screen now, from 1922, judging horse-drawn vehicles lined up at the Jubilee Oval right here at the Royal Adelaide Show. Yeah, and Laurie Evans used to run horse taxis during the war when they had no petrol. Yeah. Oh, that's Woodroof's. Woodroof's uh, drinks from Norwood. Indeed. 1923, that shot there. And uh, right now we are seeing all of our horses on the circle here in this class, a non-hackney class not exceeding 13 hands, being judged by Rodney Lane from Victoria. We're going to allow you to watch all of this wonderful action. And uh, as each of our competitors works out, we might see if we can sneak an interview or two with our competitors. Yeah, that'd be great. I like talking to the harness people. I'm a bit of a harness groupie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully you are too watching us on the live stream. The sun's just come out here. We're having four seasons in one day, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it's like Melbourne. <laughs> Well, the first of our competitors is lining up now, so what we'll do now is, if we can, if it's appropriate, if we can get approval, uh, we'll bring you some interviews with some of these magnificent competitors. They've travelled from all around Australia. We've got competitors here from Mittagong, uh, from in New South Wales, from, <laughs> from um, all around uh, the nation. But, Tad, this is going to be a beautiful class to watch. Yeah, great class.
Victoria. Have you travelled from, Robin? Uh, from Stanhope, which is over in the Goulburn Valley in Victoria. You yes. have come a mighty long way. How many hours to get here to Royal Adelaide Show? Oh, I was about seven and a half, yes. Yeah. Um, who is your handler here today? So Mark Glenn Denning. Mark comes from New South Wales. So can you walk us through this particular vehicle? Mm -hmm. So this is an actual imported vehicle. It's a Houghton Viceroy. Um, so it's come from America, basically. Uh, come out a couple of years ago, so it's been exhibited at most of our Royal shows. How do you maintain it? Well, it takes a lot of work. Basically, it's always cleaned and maintained with regards to covers and a good wax and polish and those sorts of things to keep it up to standard effectively. Where have you had successes in the lead up to this show? Uh, look, this pony went to Sydney Royal earlier in the year and um, placed third in his novice and third in the open, so we're really pleased. He's only been going in harness for 12 months and today we won the novice, which was fantastic. Yep. Wonderful. We wish you all the very best of luck, Robin. Terrific. Thanks so much. And uh, Mark, our handler, at the other end of the exhibit here, can you tell us a little about this pony? Uh, he's, his name's Sonny. Um, he's just a lovely little pony. He's very quiet. Um, this is his probably his first royal show. Um, he won the novice class, so hopefully we can win the open class. Now, for the boys and girls watching us on our live stream, that uh, all of this is unfamiliar. The blinkers, the girth, everything. Walk us through uh, the apparatus required. Well, these are the blinkers, uh, the bit. These are the reins that go back to the driver. Uh, the breastplate. Um, these are the traces that go back and hook to the cart, the viceroy that actually the horse pulls. Uh, this is what we call the crupper. And uh, that's about it. So it's pretty, pretty basic. He wears pretty standard show harness for a pony. So we wish you all the very best of luck today. We'll let you get back to your judging. Isn't this generous of our competitors having a chat to us? Tad, who shall we talk to now down the line? <laughs> well, you better talk. We'll have a chat to uh, the next of our competitors, our driver here. Rachel May. Rachel Maynard, where have you travelled from? We're only just north of Gawler, so we're relatively close for us. And uh, this exhibit that you have here today? This is my pony, Audi. Um, his real name, his show name is Yanina on Cloud9. And this is his second royal show. And he's been really, really nice and quiet for me today. Now, this magnificent vehicle that you're sitting on, tell us about it. It's a Gerald Viceroy. My mother was lucky enough to buy it for us and we look after it more than she looks after me, I think. <laughs> We're very lucky to have it. Now, is this mum here? Is this a family That's sport? That. What's your mum's name? My mother, Leanne, at the front there. Should we go have a chat to Leanne? This is a, this is a, this is a real family sport. Mum's doing the handling today, daughter's doing the driving. Sometimes mum does the driving and the girls do the handling. Oh, very good. But you're sitting in the driver's seat here today looking very comfortable. And uh, mum, could you tell us please a little bit about uh, this family's love of light harness? Of harness, yes. We've been doing harness. This is our 19th, nearly 20th year at the Royal Adelaide Show and obviously country shows we've been doing as well. Started off first doing harness with Rachel's first little pony. Broke him to harness and off we went. But we go, we do lots of things at the shows generally. Jumping, hacking, girls have done section fours here, side saddle, lots of variety. So good horse and good rider is a versatile one in my opinion. We've just had a Facebook comment from uh, Luke who has uh, just asked us how we're dealing with the wind and the rain. That's a good question for you. How are you dealing as an exhibitor with the wind and the rain? Well, the date is when you show, the date is set already, so you have to deal with it. You work your ponies in all weather conditions so they can be prepared for such conditions, not by choice. We'd prefer to be home in front of the fire. <laughs> well, we wish you all the very best of luck today and hope you do very well. Thank you for your question, Luke, by the way. Send us more questions. We'd love to answer them. We don't care how simple they are or complicated. If they're complicated, they're going to Tad, though, not to me. <laughs> uh, Tad, we've got another competitor here. Yes, have a look at this mane, isn't it absolutely beautiful? The the al natural mane, some Free people and flowing. Some of them platinum, but have a look at that. That is magnificent. I've watched this pony through the show, and it's a really, really nice, sturdy, good sort of pony. Well, let's go and meet our driver in this exhibit now before they do their workout. Janet Axel, you are looking magnificent in red and black today. Tell us about your exhibit and tell us about uh, this harness. Uh, he's a pony stallion and he's a very well behaved little pony stallion. He's a Welsh, Welsh pony. Um, they're standing up to the conditions fairly well because it's absolutely disgusting out here today. Aren't you lucky you're on the live stream watching at home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best place to be. Mm. And uh, could you tell us about this particular vehicle? 
Oh, it's just a Viceroy. Yeah. Where did you where did you come upon it? I bought it from Sydney. Hmm. The passion for harness, where does it come from? Um, I'm a third generation. My grandfather and my father have all had harness racing horses and I'm now a trainer as well and got two horses racing on Saturday night. Where are you racing at? Globe Derby. What names do we look out for? Keep the dream and show me the moolah. Where am I going to put my moolah? <laughs> Probably keep the dream. She's more reliable. <laughs> there we go. Hot tip. Keep the dream. Put your mauler on that, not on the mauler horse. All right, I like this. And now Handler here today. Uh, are you enjoying your time at, uh, minus the weather, Royal Adelaide Show? Yes, it's good fun. Yeah. But it's, boy, the weather's turned on today, though, isn't it? Now, you're about to go and do your workout in front of our judge, who's come to us from Victoria, a very well-known man in the harness world. Tell us, for the boys and girls who are going to watch your workout, what you've been asked to do. He asks you to walk out, he checks the confirmation of the horse. He asks you to walk out and then you, in a working trot, in an open figure of eight, come to a halt and then a rein back. Now, when we say confirmation, there's going to be boys and girls at home that say, I've never heard that word before. Why is, there goes the hat, never mind. See you later, Adelaide. Uh, what, why is confirmation so important? I'll let you answer that while I chase my hat. Um, that's because of, um, they're able to, able to travel and collect themselves up and drive themselves through the back legs. That's, that's why confirmation is important. A lot of strength required in these ponies and you can see wonderful muscular confirmation here on this pony at the moment. Wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is how great our stewards are. They look after our competitors, they look after our judge and they'll even collect the odd rogue Cobra that's blown over <laughs> across the ring. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Vicky Mantell, you are looking just magnificent here in your navy tweed. And uh, tell us, whereabouts have you travelled from and who's helping you out as handler today? Uh, we're from Turidan in Victoria and this is my daughter Melanie. How far will you travel to compete? This is probably the furthest, or Canberra probably, yes. We all love, because as South Australians, we all love this show, but you've travelled from interstate. Why is it important to compete here? Oh, we love this show. We love this show because it's still a, an agricultural and a horticultural show. It's, um, it's just wonderful, yeah. Now, there's all sorts of equestrian pursuits you can pick. You can play polo cross, you can show jump, you can be out here in the show ring riding. Why is it in your blood or in your heart to be involved in this particular part of the equestrian arena? Well, to be honest, I used to ride and then my daughter started doing harness, so I thought, well, I might as well join her. <laughs> so. Good question for Melanie then, isn't it? Melanie, <laughs> this pony is just gorgeous. Now, we saw a free-flowing mane a moment ago. You've decided to go in a different direction. Uh, tell us why you've presented your pony the way you have. So we plait them and put the wool in just to present them nicely, so it gives them a nice line on their neck and just makes them okay, look better, I guess. But Melanie, why have you dragged mum into the harness world? Um, I the very expensive and time-consuming harness world. I tried riding and I didn't like it. I thought, I just went, oh, this isn't for me. And I still loved horses and wanted, wanted to be involved in horses. And then I fell in love with harness. <laughs> well, could you do me a favour? Because you've just got such a beautiful screen presence. So I'm loving chatting to you. Can you walk us through the um, attributes of this pony that make this quite a spectacular harness pony? So he's a very pretty pony to look at. Um, being that deep bay with four white socks and, and black points. Um, he's got a beautiful step, so he has a beautiful movement to him, and he's got beautiful paces, and as well as being just a pretty pony as well. And his confirmation is very good as well. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I've just got a Facebook comment that's come through right now. Josh from Perth has said, thank you for the wonderful live stream footage that we're providing here, but how long does it take to train a pony into harness? Well, we've had Targo, um, this pony, since he was a weanling, so that's me and just off his mum, and he's now... Eight. Eight. Eight years old, so he was broken in at four, so it's taken him four years to get to this le this level. Well, Melanie, can I just say as a side comment, you're such a phenomenal interview talent. <laughs> I'm going to get your details after this, and you're coming to every harness show I do around <laughs> Australia. <laughs> so I used to be a zookeeper doing um, wildlife presentations and things like that. So <laughs> now how to explain something. You're extraordinary. Have a, have a look at those four white socks. They are beautiful. And now, when, when he... we say socks, we don't mean we've popped on some woolen socks, do we? No, they're not woolen. You don't pull them on. You just make sure you shampoo them. And he's got lovely feet, lovely black feet and beautiful white socks. And when he moves, picks up the white socks, he looks really great. Okay. He's in very good nick too, have a look. He's a bit like me, he's very well uh, padded. Hey, he's had a delicious lunch, I think. Hey, 
Now, Tashi has just come through on Facebook as well. Hello, Tashi. Thank you so much for your comment. Tashi has just asked us a question. Um, moving away from our magnificent harnessed ponies, do we have Clydesdales this afternoon? And the answer, of course, is yes. Yes, we do. We have the big horses, yes. Um, there are people on uh, York Peninsula in South Australia who bought the first Clydesdale horses to South Australia. And their name's Francis and their farm is called uh, Loudon Hill. An amazing thing is my grand great grandfather had the Loudon Hill Hotel in Scotland and they're from the same area. So it's truly what a small world. It's an amazing thing and I actually years probably about twenty years ago I sent them a postcard of the hotel with my grandfather out the front with guess what? A harness horse and he's sitting in a buggy with a horse in the in the in the harness. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Hold on, we've got a comment coming through from Janita, and Janita has asked who is judging today. It is Rodney Lane from Victoria, a very well-known driver, a very well-known trainer of uh, harness ponies and harness horses. Yeah, he's an amazing man. He's got 30 vehicles. He collects vehicles. I collect horses, but he collects, he collects vehicles. vehicles. I'll tell you what's an expensive pursuit because you've also got to collect the horses to go with the vehicles in this sport. Yeah, you do, yeah. Now, these individuals here have also, our exhibitors have also competed. Well, shall we go and have a chat to them? Yeah, they're the Vaughtons. They are quite famous. The Vaughtons? The Vaughtons, yeah. Reese Vaughton, the, the boy, is a fabulous competitor. He'll be out here in the cone driving later. I can't one, wait for that. And one year I rode on the back of the cart with him. Hello, we're coming to surprise you with a live stream at the moment. You've done your workout for our judge. Uh, tell us what was required in the workout today. Uh, so we walked first a uh, figure of eight at trot and then a uh, halt and a rain back. Now, who is your driver? Uh, so Belinda Matner is driving at the moment. And your exhibit here today, your pony? Uh, so this is Shangri-La Rockstar. Shangri-La Rockstar. And uh, what a rock star indeed. Absolutely magnificent exhibit. Another example of a beautifully... Uh, put together harness pony. Hello. Tell us where have you travelled from? Uh, Woods Point, just outside of Murray Bridge. So you're nice locals, go the South Australians. Uh, tell me your passion for competing in the light harness arena. Where did it originate? Um, I've already been in it for the last couple of years. Um, newbies, rookies. Well, I am, but uh, the guys I'm with, um, they've been doing it for quite a few years and they got me hooked on it. So it's actually my first year actually driving, so it's been quite a lot of fun. But, yeah, very nerve-wracking. Now, ask us any questions on the live stream. We can throw them here to our wonderful drivers. Now, I haven't talked to anyone about how they look today because the outfits are on top of preparing a beautiful pony, owning a magnificent vehicle and keeping it in great condition. Tell me about uh, your outfit today. Um, yeah, we've kept it very simple um, and just changed the um, aprons and the, the vest and um, obviously the hats. Um, fantastic hats and um, yeah just it's um, amazing what you can do to um, put it all together but um, yeah certainly um, takes a bit of effort to uh, coordinate everything and uh, get it all all right but uh, but yeah it's um, takes a bit of effort. It's a beautiful nod to the way we got around in Australia many many years ago and I love that you've prepared for the cold weather with a nice woolen blanket. It certainly is it's, it certainly helps with the uh, temperature it certainly does. Isn't it just a fantastic class? And like you see harness at a lot of small agricultural shows and the quality here and the number of competitors is really heartwarming to see. Yeah, they used to have a fabulous class here years ago called the Concours d'Elegance and they'd have about 30 vehicles and everyone done up to the nines and judge it for the, um, you know, harness and... Uh, horse and dress and it was just a, a fabulous class. Now we have one more competitor to speak to, Tad. Let's uh, head on over and have a chat. Isn't it nice that we've gotten to meet all of our exhibitors here today and uh, speak to them about their beautiful vehicles? And uh, great, great uh, vehicle you've got here. And must I say, I've watched the pony during the show. He's uh, been quite good. He's a good boy. We call him George. That's his paddock name. Narrawarra Pink Panther is his prefix. Right. Yeah. He's a great pony. He'll give you his all every time. Yeah, and no, I watched him uh, from upstairs mainly, but he's look, looked really good and very, very, very handy. Yeah, and uh, your handler looks like he's uh, done up, done up uh, quite good, like yourself. Yeah, he's been trained as well as the pony. <laughs> That's very, very good. Very, very good. And you're from Victoria, aren't you? Yes, from Victoria, from Melbourne. Oh, you are from Melbourne? Right. Yeah, I used to have a lot of fun in Melbourne years ago. I used to go there and uh, go around with the... go around with the... Um, 
the uh, Carlton Clydesdale boys ah, in the old right. days delivering beer around Melbourne with Mike Till and Glenn Pate. And it was uh, a great experience the to go Clydesdale around with the heavy team. horses, yeah, with the Clydesdale team. Yeah. So who do you follow in the football? Kangaroos. Oh, the kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to answer that. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. We don't talk, we're not talking about football much in South Australia <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. Look at this Palomino gelding, just gorgeous. Yeah, look at his mane with the with the braids, with the with the wool, and it's all plaited. It's beautiful. Yeah, very very nice pony. I'll try not to lose my hat and startle anyone. Yeah, and um, how's how have you enjoyed the show? It's been a good show so far. Good ponies working all happily, so we're happy at this end. You must stay pretty fit running around after the harness vehicles. Each night I crash in a heap, bloody after running around after them all all day. You do a great job, very well done. Well, there we have it, boys and girls, mums and dads on the live stream. Hit us with your questions. Each of our competitors has worked out. Rodney Lane, our judge from Victoria, is currently making his decisions. You can see him in that uh, trench coat if he's on your screens, uh, making his decision at the moment, and it's not an easy class to judge. No, not an easy class at all. They do a fantastic job, the judges. It uh, yeah, must be a very, very uh, draining experience to come out and see so many horses and, and have to be so thorough to, to, to pick a winner. It's a real honour, isn't it, too? We've had judges from all over the country flown in uh, to honour us with their expertise in their various fields. Yeah, no, they do, they do a great, great job. Well, uh, we just had a little chat then with uh, the exhibit from Corinne Collins and Andrew James. Now, Warra Pink uh, Park Pink Panther, the Palomino gelding that we just interviewed a moment ago. We also had a lovely chat today. You can see on your screen right now, catalogue number 201. That's Amara Park Targo. And uh, that's uh, Vicky and Melanie Mantle that we had a chat to a few moments ago. Down in the red and black, it's catalogue number 218, and that is Reese Warden Driving's team's nomination of Shangri-La, RPS Rockstar. What a fabulous name. And uh, the catalogue that we spoke to further down here now is catalogue number 220, uh, Janet Exel's nomination. And uh, that is Westbury Shades of Chicago. Also catalogue number 205, uh, Leanne and Rachel Maynard, the mother and daughter combination with Yanina on cloud nine. What a beautiful name. And catalogue number 219, rounding us out, Warren Wood, Providence and Robin Anderson. The grey gelding. Oh, I tell you what, they're making their way over now. Let's head to the presentation area for our announcement of our... Winner and place getters in class 41, harness pony, non-hackney, over 12 and not exceeding 13 hands. Two, one, eight. Place, two, zero, five. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Yes, the uh, class 41 is the harness pony, non-hackney, over 12 hands and not exceeding 13 hands. Uh, first place was uh, number 197, the uh, Collins, uh, Corinne Collins and Andrew James's um, nomination, which is Nawara Park Pink Panther. Been a long time since I've done this. <laughs> yeah. uh, second place, he went to Robin Anderson's exhibit number 219, Warren Wood Providence. Third placing was uh, uh, Vicky and Melanie Mantle, all the way from Pakenham, Victoria, with Amara Park Targo. Uh, third, third, fourth place was uh, Janet Exel's Westbury Shades of Chicago, with number 220 local competitors. And fifth was 218, oh, the Reese Ford and Driving Team Shangri La RPS Rockstar. And sixth placing to um, a great family as well. Uh, number 205, Leanne and Rachel Maynard's Yanina on Cloud. Thank you so much. Well, lovely to hear the voice there of Bruce Redpath. He's busy out there stewarding, but he's also our uh, reliable expert on ground when it comes to the light harness section of the show. Heavy harness as well. We're bringing you his commentary throughout the day. But it is the Palomino gelding today. Nawara Park, Pink Panther. What a magnificent exhibit. It was the first to work out here for our judge, Rodney Lane. And Rodney making a presentation at the moment to third place. But uh, let's see if we can get a quick interview here. 
Well, Andrew, James, what a magnificent exhibit. You've had success all over Australia. We have. We've been very lucky. He's a great pony. He's a beautiful pony, and boy, he just looks so lovely in harness. Do you use him in any other pursuit at all? No, he does a little bit of pleasure driving around home, but his career is a show pony. Uh, well, your uh, nominations have done very well over many years. Why is Royal Adelaide a wonderful show to come along to? It's always a great show, great arena, beautiful surface to drive on. And um, that's always a pleasure. This is the first year the weather's given us a whipping. It certainly has, but I'll tell you what a good harness pony can handle this weather. Correct. Well, there we have Nawara Park, Pink Panther. Just look at this exhibit. The blue ribbon today, and deservedly so. And uh, Rodney Lane, our judge, has a couple more classes to judge here today. But I don't know if you can see behind me, Emily. We've got our heavy harnesses joined. We had one of our uh, viewers before ask us on the live stream, do we have Clydesdales coming out? And the answer surely is, yes, we do. We'll bring you our harness classes in just a moment's time. And... Uh, We'll be back to you. Stay tuned on the live stream for our heavy harness classes this afternoon.
Willa, you've just joined us for a very exciting class, the judging of our Supreme Champion Heavy Harness. We've got two magnificent exhibits out here at the moment. You can see just behind me here, uh, this is Glenn Corey Clydesdales. We had a beautiful chat with them early on in the show. This is a property, Glen Heath, that has been in the one family for 125 years. Three generations showing Clydesdales and Heavy Harness out here at the moment. Wonderful local family, um, just gorgeous. You can see the son on the back here, Christian, He's flown in from Geraldton, Western Australia, all the way over to the Royal Adelaide show so that he could be part of the family exhibit this year. Uh, we can see Russell March up there as well. Russell's uh, very involved with the Clydesdale Association of the Commonwealth and also uh, the South Australian body here. And uh, I think you, we might find Kerry Ann at the front. No, Carrie Ann's not out there today, that's all right. We've also got, this is um, Mike Keogh's nomination that you can see at the moment, vying for Supreme Champion Heavy Harness of the show. And uh, Mike is out there with his wonderful Cooper's uh, delivery vehicle. And this is all a wonderful look back at a time where in Australia you didn't get your bread, your milk, your beer, anything at all uh, without these magnificent horses, the Clydesdales that are out here, the heavy horses that carried Australia on their back for a long time. Uh, Raymond Mitchell is our judge that you can see behind me on screen now. He's come to us from Bendigo, Victoria. Very uh, passionate competitor. And you can see the weather's a bit of a mess out here and hopefully my hat doesn't get in the way of that exhibit at the moment. But uh, I'll let you watch this class here at the moment. We will bring you the results as soon as they come to hand. And uh, I can tell you also that we've had some great winners in the past. Uh, 2008 was actually the year for Glen Corey, Clydesdales, the March family that you can see on your screen right now. And uh, prior to that, in fact, was Mike Keogh and uh, P. Stafford, Strafford's nomination of Mr. Brock and Mr. Darcy in 2017. The well-known Keogh family, all the way from the ACT, they had success for two years consecutively here as Supreme Champion Heavy Harness Exhibit. Uh, in 2013, they were successful as well as 2012, but it was the Fritches back in 2011, uh, Ian and Lynette, that uh, were our 2011 Supreme Champion Heavy Harness exhibit of the show. But this year, it's a competition between our 2018 champions that you're seeing work out now and our 2017 champion, Mike Keogh. Now, I wonder if I can grab Bruce Redpath and uh, we might ask Bruce to take us on a tour of this vehicle. Bruce Redpath, I wondered if you might take us on a bit of a tour for the boys and girls and mums and dads who are asking questions on the live stream at home on these delivery vehicles. Could you tell us what we're looking at here? Okay, well, first of all, the uh, ponies are called horses. They're what we call um, a medium delivery uh, pair uh, because there's two of them, naturally enough. Um, and both these ponies have won... Uh, in a single class as earlier in the show with um, a butcher's wagon which was uh, you saw earlier in the show on, on live streaming and um, they've just worked now for the supreme champion as you've probably told the folks at home the lorry as we call it is a delivery lorry and of course back in the days before uh, trucks the, and you see the brewery trucks around the cities delivering beer in barrels and so forth this is a cooper's wagon from from uh, that era, around about what year, Mike? 1910. 1910, and uh, you can see the registration there. Its last registration was 5872 in 1929 to 30. That was the registration of the of the lorry, and of course, this lorry at the moment's got the crates on it, delivering uh, bottles or. Uh, Leader cask, I think they were in those days, but normally they have barrels of beer on there as well. And they've, the, these lorries, you might have seen in the workout that our judge Raymond Mitchell asked the, the pair to fan, which is they've got to be able to fan to the left and fan to the right as a pair, and also um, back, be able to back up laneways and things like that in the cities because the streets weren't wide or like they are, they are today. Now, Redders, can I bring you up to the front of our horses here? On our girth here, we've got... Why? Well, you know today that um, 
Everybody seems to want to ride a bicycle. and They've got a bell on it, don't they? Yes. Well, that's what these bells are there for. We've got they... a friend here. Yeah, he's a good friend. As they come up the street working, the bells are tinkling and it gives people the warning that, uh, that there's horses coming by. That, that's also... Um, if you couldn't hear them clip clopping, I don't know why, but we'll, we'll use that as that. Just... Now, Mike, I wonder if we could um, ask you just a little about these, this magnificent pair that you have here today. Yes, um, Blackie and Joe, they're half brothers. Six year old, or five and six. Now, heavy horses have been uh, required for moving Australia back in the day before uh, vehicles. Uh, tell us a, bit, a little about, did you breed these guys? Did you buy them? Uh, well, actually, uh, this one here, Blackie, was given to me as a yearling foal, and I sort of thought, I don't know what I'm going to do with him, but anyway, his father jumped the fence and served a mare. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the same sire is the... He's the son of the same sire, like they're half-brothers. And I bought them together because uh, they're a lovely matching pair, and they've got each got one black front leg. And the Go have a look. Hold on one second. They do too. Look at that. Matching white socks. Um, and they just make a nice matching pair. There's, um, you know, there's pretty hard to distinguish who's who, really. But they're, they're... We use all sorts of heavy horses for um, delivery vehicles. So we've got Shires and uh, we've got our Percherons and Clydesdales. Do you have a particular preference? Uh, well, Clydesdales really are good working, heavy working horses, and I do enjoy them. A lot I've had teams and things over the years, but these two here are more of a uh, light delivery, and you might have to trot, say, 30, 40 kilometres in a day in the, in the time delivering, and they were just a lot more quicker than the other ones, yeah. Now, can we talk a little bit about, we've talked about outfits with our light harness before. Could you talk us through uh, your outfit today? Um, well, um, my lorry has uh, been rebuilt uh, some years ago by Bob Woods, uh, well, the late Bob Woods. He restored and rebuilt a few things for me and the harness has been built about 15 years ago and the collars and all those trades are very rare now. It's very hard to find those people who make collars and um, uh, especially retiring wheels and all that sort of thing. Oh, I need to let you go back to your judging, don't I? Sorry, thank you so much, Mike. Isn't it? Uh, this is a bit rare at a royal where we get to actually speak to our exhibitors, so we've been very fortunate indeed. But uh, we're going to line our exhibits up now because this is the judging of Supreme Champion Heavy Harness of the show. This is the best of the very best here in this state, and uh, we're going to see them line up now. We'll make our way to the presentation area. Two distinctly different vehicles, uh, even quite different breeds of heavy horse being used out here uh, but we'll see our presentation in just a moment's time now, raymond mitchell without giving away your result here today have you enjoyed your judging here at the royal show enjoyed our show over here judging there's a lot of different variety of animals over this way so it's been really really good to see what we've got here you've traveled from bendigo why do you so love heavy harness uh, listen, I've worked with Carlton Clydesdales for the last 20 years, so I've got a little bit of a fraction of a love with uh, Clydesdales. Your wonderful wife's here in support. Uh, she's very much involved in this world too? Yeah, well, mainly she's in the stock horse area, but uh, she, we've got a horse now after work, ex-Carlton, and we usually take him out once a week. So I'll let you get to your duties now to make your presentation. Raymond Mitchell there from Bendigo, our judge here today. Hats are flying everywhere. I've just given up now. But uh, we can't wait to bring you the results of our Supreme Champion Heavy Harness exhibit of the 2019 Royal Adelaide Show. 244 years, thank you very much, of history. And our supreme champion this year, the wonderful Mike Keogh and his Cooper's Brewery nomination. These horses are half brothers and today they, uh, after two years, are once again recognised from the uh, Keogh stables as our supreme champion heavy harness exhibit of the show.
Well, uh, we've probably got a lovely moment now to look back through some beautiful old photographs uh, of a time when these were not just magnificent exhibits at a show, but uh, were indeed a mechanism for receiving our bread, our beer, uh, bricks, everything was delivered on the backs of these sorts of vehicles. So let's look at these gorgeous vehicles now. This is a photo from 1896, the corner of Rundle Street and King William Road. Horse-drawn trams, can you believe it? That is one of the major streets here in Adelaide. And uh, the corner of Rundle Street and King Street there, you're seeing the heavy harness once again. King William Street. Well, this is from 1910, a horse-drawn tram right along King William Street. Oh, this is uh, 1885, looking north, showing uh, waiting horse-drawn cabs and horse-drawn trams. This is a time that's almost impossible to imagine the way we get around today in Ubers and uh, all sorts of vehicles. I saw someone on a motorised skateboard this morning on the way to the show. Well, this is from 1911, vehicles owned by E. Williamson and Co., a uh, biscuit manufacturer on Weymouth Street, and they were joining the parade. Well, this is a photo from 1940. A Williston horse-drawn delivery van belonging to A.M. Ward, the fruiterer and greengrocer. Can you imagine? That's the uh, way we used to pick up our groceries. Well, this is a horse-drawn plower there. Of course, uh, these heavy horses were crucial for agriculture back in the day, and this is a shot from 1940. There's another plough here. In fact, the, the March family at Glen Quarry on their property, Glen Heath, just outside of Adelaide here, uh, they had uh, for a long time done all of their cropping and all of their farming using these uh, harness vehicles and horse-drawn ploughs. This is 1904, this shot here. This is horses pulling a wagon in deep sea water off a platform at Denial Bay. What a shot. What a shot. Aren't we glad we had... Uh, photographs to capture that time. Now this is 1924, this is Granite Island, a horse-drawn tram car. I can't, can you count how many people are on there? Looks like 30 or 40, unbelievable. This is actually a very famous photo taken uh, near Roseworthy, horses struck by lightning in 1901. Boy, haven't we been treated. Thank you to the uh, archives team here. They've done a wonderful job. And uh, Floodlight as well. They've collated all these beautiful old photos so that we can see here uh, the way things were. And a big thank you also to the Keogh families and uh, the March families that were our competitors then for Supreme Champion Heavy Harness Exhibit. What they do to compete at these agricultural shows and show us. Uh, some wonderful history. They're making their way out of the main arena now. Just beautiful exhibits and uh, a lovely sight to see here at the 244th Royal Adelaide Show. I'll tell you what, we're going to come back in a few moments' time with a champion non-hackney harness ponies. That'll be judged here in the main arena. We have history going back to 1998 that I'll bring to you in just a moment's time. But uh, as we're waiting for that class to enter the arena, let's hear a few words from our wonderful sponsors.
a fantastic show this year, love it. We come over to the Adelaide show here every year. I'm really excited to be competing today. Celebrate the state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. Theshow.com.au